Hey, welcome back to the channel, man. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Everybody, go ahead, like this video, comment down below. If you want to support the channel, go ahead, hit that link in the description. Let's get right into it. Hey, man, look. So I just got done watching this Big Moochie Grape interview, and this dude was bugging the whole time, man. I don't know what he was on, but every time they asked a question about Young Dolph, he would be rolling his eyes and sitting, leaning back in his chair and really ducking and hitting his vape and not answering no questions. And they're all trying. It was like good questions, too. He was like, man, how do you feel about Dolph? Da, 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 who's up next? And like, what did he give you and all this stuff? And so... He's sitting there, and when you look closely, he's got on literally Dolph's PRE chain that Daddy O took and gave to him. And what you guys got to understand is that this whole time he was with Jay Fizzle, and they were talking about how Jay was the first one that Dolph signed to PRE. But nobody, that, that info came out of nowhere because it's like, how come they wasn't talking about Jay Fizzle all along, but Key Glock was the one that was riding around with Dolph everywhere. So if you really ask me, it's like when they asked Big Moochie Grape how he even got into PRE, he said it was because of Jay Fizzle. And it's like, no, nah, because look, Dolph was the one who signed Big Moochie Grape. But for some reason, Jay Fizzle like put him on. And next thing you know, it's like all these new dudes started popping up in PRE all because Dolph was trying to give the people he signed their homies a chance and all this stuff. And so, but when you really look at it, Big Moochie Grape is actually closer to Big Scar, who's double R. And that actually goes against PRE. So if you look at it, man, they just money hungry and they trying to do whatever they can to take the top man off and so they can move themselves up. So there's a lot of greed in it. But going back to the interview, they asked about Dolph and everything, right? And Big Moochie Grape, you look at him and his whole body language and everything, he was acting just like Raven. He was acting just like the Cookie Monsters, man. And this ain't the first time that they tried to put Big Moochie Grape on an interview to explain some stuff. Because the last time when they did it in that interview where he has the red background, I talked about two, I talked about that too. So go binge watch the videos and you'll see exactly how the last time they did an interview with Big Moochie Grape, he actually chopped and screwed up the story about what happened with Dolph and how they were actually, he was actually with him the weekend before and set up the whole turkey drive thing. That was his idea. And so he actually kind of self-snitched and told too much about how he was involved and had his hands at, and what happened at play. And so now the, the dude that was doing the interview for this new time, this new one, he was actually like trying to circle back and like get one last Dolph question in. And even Jay Fizzle started acting weird, man. And so these two dudes, man, they were acting very, very suspect, very weird and sketchy. The vibes was completely off. And everybody was commenting, saying how they didn't get a good feeling of Big Moochie Grape. And that this that interview that he just did was confirming and proof that he did have something to do with everything that happened to Dolph. And look, rest in peace to Dolph, guys. Because if you really look close, the fact that he even had his chain on just goes to show how daddy O was able to get the literally the chains that Dolph was wearing like how did they get that did Maurice take a chain to Raven anybody like we don't know and everything is alleged and so just like how we're waiting for the footage to come out but the fact that he was wearing Dolph's chain and then ducking the real questions about like what Dolph did to help him and like how he feels about the whole thing and everything like that he didn't want to talk and but everybody was saying that, oh, he must have uh, he must have been like off something and whatnot. But it's not even that. It's like his whole uh, body language, like I said. And so that just goes to show, man, a lot of people that was in PRE was really not like riding for it like it was supposed to be. Everything in PRE changed after Dolph, man. It was not, it's not the same. And you just can't go and say that it's still the same PRE. No, man, they don't have the leader and you could tell, bro. Like these two dudes, they look like they don't care. They look like they might have uh, known a lot more of what happened and that they might have had something in it. So they were like cautious to like give any praise to Dolph and they were cautious to like even speak on too much about the whole thing because they know that something's going on and they might have been involved the turkey drive thing the fact that big moochie grape had a big 
beef with Young Dolph and was going crazy on Instagram Live saying all this weird stuff to Dolph literally days before everything happened to Dolph, like right when they got back from the whole trip to New York. And so, but the guy was like, okay, so he started asking about if they had songs with Dolph that they can get access to or they're going to release them. And Big Moochie Grape said something about how he did a lot of songs with Dolph right before Dolph passed. And so it's like, man, he probably used him to do a bunch of songs because he knew what was about to come happening in the next coming days. Y'all have to understand that a lot of people, they be plotting to take down the big dog. It's a lot of crabs in the barrel mentality. And that's why PRE has changed, man, because without Dolph there, it's like the next man up is still like very trying to uh, prove something and take from anybody like they don't have no type of future ways to plan on anything. They feel like they have to like almost steal the attention and try to be the number one person, right? Instead of working together and having Dolph still be there, man. If Dolph was there, they would automatically be getting more money because he has the all the ideas. He has the brain power behind actually making money in the whole industry. They're just plants. They're just like, hey, they're just put there because they kept going with their flow, right? They just kept going with their music and Dolph was just nice enough to pick up a couple artists locally. If Dolph didn't stay around in Memphis, they would have never got the chance to be signed or anything like that. Like for real, Dolph could have just moved to the hills in LA and just signed uh, talent that is like global wide. He could have just signed people from all other states and countries and stuff just so he could have a real big business. But he tried to stay local and that's the only way that all these low end PRE guys got a chance. And when they go on the interviews and look like how Big Moochie Grape looked and looks weird as hell and that they might have had something to do with the downfall. So that whole situation just goes back to how everybody was talking for months about it being a back door and how a lot of people around Dolph weren't the right type of people and that the people he was around and kept around was ready to snake him at any moment. And that that's really true, guys, because you have to understand these guys aren't actually at the status of Dolph. And so when you look at it, they don't think like him. They don't act like him. They don't have they don't know what he knows. So they can never see the vision or have the ideas of what Dolph was doing to take everybody to the next level. All they know is they got to get their next lick. They look at everything like it's a lick. They don't look at it in what you could earn and what you could do if you do this and that. No, they don't think like that. They just think everything is a lick. If you get money, that's a lick. That's a, you almost like they have to take it even if the opportunity is right there. They feel like they have to finesse it. And so that's the difference between a lot of people, y'all. So go ahead. If you like this video, go ahead and uh, hit the link down below and support the channel. Um, come back for another video. It's going to be a lot of news coming out. So I'm going to see you on the next one.